Hello and welcome to this podcast. Today we'll be talking about that great area over the rainbow, the atmosphere. Let's get started. Before we begin, let's review from our previous lesson. The Earth has four primary systems. We call these the hydrosphere, which includes all the water on Earth and oceans, rivers, lakes, rain, and mist. The geosphere, which includes Earth's crust, which also includes landforms, rocks, and soils. The biosphere, which is all living matter on Earth, including all plants and animals. And last but not least, our topic of the day, the atmosphere, the thin layer of gases that surrounds the Earth. As we get started, you can print this note sheet from my website and follow along as we take notes. This is what it looks like. The atmosphere is the thin layer of gases that surrounds our planet. What, do you, what is the atmosphere made of? It's made of mostly nitrogen, 78%. Second is oxygen, what we need to breathe, at 21%. Next is argon. One of the noble gases, which doesn't do much, but it does make up almost 1% of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, which makes up 0.04%. Water vapor, which makes up 0 to 4%. This one is not on your circle in the notes. And last but not least, other trace gases come in at 0.1%. These include neon, helium, methane, hydrogen, nitrous oxide, and ozone. Why do we need the atmosphere? There are a number of reasons. First, it protects organisms from the sun's harmful UV rays. It also maintains the right temperature range for life. And last but not least, it supplies the gases that we need for breathing. Some properties of the atmosphere that you need to know are first, air pressure. Air pressure is the weight of air molecules pressing down on the earth. How does it change as we go up? Think about that for a minute. Air pressure decreases as we go up because there is always less air above us pressing down. How does temperature change as we go up? This one's way more complicated. Let's take a look. As we start up from our current position, the temperature goes down, but it changes direction and starts increasing later and then decreasing later and increasing again. We actually have defined these changes in the temperature profile as layers of the atmosphere. So whenever the atmosphere changes from getting hotter to getting colder or vice versa, that's a different layer of the atmosphere. There are four primary layers, the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. We're going to learn more about these now. To help us get started, we're going to play a game. In class, this would be a game, but for you watching this podcast, it's really just a little trivia quiz for you. For this section of the podcast, pull out your notes that have layers of the atmosphere, table and diagram, um, is the file, and this is what it looks like. On this first sheet with the boxes, you can take notes on each layer of the atmosphere. On the other paper with the lines, you can draw pictures to help you remember what happens in each layer. So let's get started with our little quiz. Do you remember what is the closest layer of the atmosphere to the ground? We just saw it. Out of these four, it was the troposphere. The troposphere goes up to 12 kilometers. Do you remember the next layer? The one second closest to the ground? You guessed it, that's the stratosphere. The stratosphere goes to an elevation of 50 kilometers above the ground. Now, which order are the last two? The mesosphere first, which goes up to 80 kilometers, and then the thermosphere, which goes up to 320 kilometers. Let's learn a little bit more about each layer and what happens there. This is the layer of the atmosphere with the coldest temperatures. Do you remember which one that is? That would be the mesosphere. Take a moment now to write notes about the mesosphere on your table and draw a picture of something cold on your diagram. 
This is the layer of the atmosphere where most weather occurs. Which do you think that is? I hope you guessed the troposphere. That's the layer where we live and the weather that we see. This is the layer of the atmosphere that contains the ozone layer. You may have heard of the ozone layer, but do you know what it does? The ozone layer is in the stratosphere and it is made of ozone, which is three oxygen molecules bonded together. This layer of ozone blocks UV rays from the sun. UV stands for ultraviolet, so it blocks ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation is what damages our skin. It can cause damage to DNA, and it also can cause cataracts in your eyes. So it's very important that the ozone blocks a significant amount of it. Some rays still get through, and that's why we use sunscreen. You may have seen a label on your sunscreen saying that it blocks UVA and UVB rays. Also, when you purchase sunglasses, you'll find out how much um, UV light they block to protect your eyes. So, ozone is found in the stratosphere. Sometimes molecules, sorry, the ozone layer is found in the stratosphere, but sometimes molecules of ozone can be found in lower parts of the atmosphere. And when that happens, we actually call it pollution. So, moving on, this is the layer of the atmosphere with the highest air pressure. Any guesses? That's right, the troposphere. Take a moment to write that in your notes and to catch up on ones you haven't written yet if you've gotten behind. Next question. This is the layer of the atmosphere where satellites orbit. Where might that be? The thermosphere. This is the highest true layer of Earth's atmosphere and that's where we find satellites. This is the layer of the atmosphere where most meteors burn up. Do you know where that is? Oh, I hope you guessed the mesosphere. The mesosphere burns up most meteors because this is where the there becomes enough air molecules that as the meteor fl um, flies into them, it presses down on the molecules, compressing them. That compression causes heat, which causes the meteors to burn up. Obviously not all meteors are burned up because a few of them have hit the earth and continue to do so, but most of them are burned up in the mesosphere. What's our next question? This is the layer of the atmosphere where commercial airplanes fly. Any guesses there? The stratosphere. Why do you think that is? Commercial airplanes fly in the bottom part of the stratosphere because they can fly above above the weather and have much less interference for the flight. This is the layer of the atmosphere where most greenhouse gases are. Where would that be? I hope you guessed the troposphere. That's where most greenhouse gases are produced and trapped. This is the layer of the atmosphere where the jet stream is found. The jet stream is a major air current that travels around the northern hemisphere and is one of the um, most important factors in causing weather and climate on our planet. So what layer is that found in? That would be the troposphere. I hope that you guessed the troposphere because even though the jet stream is above what we normally feel, it is also a form of weather and the um, troposphere is where we find weather. This is the layer of the atmosphere where the aurora borealis occurs. The aurora borealis is more commonly known as the northern lights, and it's the color that we can see in the northern sky during the night. The aurora borealis is caused by uh, long wavelength ra uh, radio waves in the, um, in the upper atmosphere. Those uh, long wave radio waves are also responsible for allowing us to have some long range radio communications from here on Earth. So where does that happen? That's in the thermosphere. This is the layer of the atmosphere reaches, reaching the highest temperatures. Any guesses on where that is? You guessed it right. It was the thermosphere. This is the layer of the atmosphere that interacts the most with life. Where would that be? Where do we live? We're an important form of life. The troposphere. The troposphere is the layer that interacts the most with life. 
So here are all four layers of the atmosphere. The troposphere gets cooler going up, the stratosphere gets warmer, the mesosphere gets cooler going up, and the thermosphere gets warmer. Why is that? The details are beyond the scope of this class, but it has to do with where they receive their heat from and the density or number of air molecules. The troposphere is heated primarily from heat radiating up from the ground, and so it's warmest towards the bottom. The other layers are heated primarily from radiation coming down from the sun. But the thermosphere doesn't have very many, um, the thermosphere and mesosphere don't have as many air molecules to be heated up, so that affects the way that they warm up, and it's not exactly what we might expect. That's beyond this class, but if you were curious, I wanted you to know. Now let's take a little quick review. What layer was on top? The thermosphere. What were the important features here? This is the layer that gets the hottest. It's where the northern lights or aurora borealis occur, and it's where satellites fly. What's next? That would be the mesosphere. What happens here? This is where meteors burn up, and it's the coldest layer. What's next? The stratosphere. The stratosphere contains the ozone layer, and this is where commercial jets fly as well. Spy planes, spy planes actually fly at about the middle of the stratosphere. The last but not least layer, that would be the troposphere. Many things happen here, including greenhouse gases, weather, the highest air pressure, and where most life is found and interacts. There are just a couple more things that you need to know before we move on. The ozone layer, we've mentioned it briefly, but I want to repeat, this is a layer in the stratosphere that is made up of ozone, which is three oxygen molecules bound together. It absorbs ultraviolet radiation, which protects or living organisms from damage to DNA and from burns to skin and cataracts. The ozone layer, uh, ironically, has little effect on the temperature of the Earth. You may have heard of a hole in the ozone layer in the past that is actually being repaired due to efforts of civilization, but that ozone layer allows more UV radiation, which can damage skin and eyes, but it actually doesn't change the temperature. And one last thing, the exosphere is the outer layer where the atmosphere mixes with space. Some scientists consider this a true layer of the atmosphere, while others do not. But I wanted you to know that in case you see it somewhere. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation, and thank you for watching.